Is this started? Okay, here we go. <laughs> go, he said. Well, <laughs> you're supposed to say you're right. Welcome uh, once again uh, to be with us. And it's an interesting, an interesting thing to discuss. And we, we, we were just talking a moment ago about these things called crop circles. There are appearing in wheat and corn fields throughout the world. And most recently, in, um, I think it was in December in England, um, in the wheat, the wheat would actually be pushed down and these magnificent things such as a, a single eye would appear. There was another circle so, like this. Uh, I mean, everything actually perfectly proportioned, geometrically proportioned. And I became interested from the standpoint that if there is a reason for all of this, and if there is such a thing as God, whatever that may be, would not it be possible that there would be more than just going to a building called a church, reading books, and then hoping for some kind of a divine thing after death? Is there any way that this thing called God, whatever it may be, would communicate? And then I, I began to look, began to meditate, began to go into the scriptures, and began to look more deeply at the symbols. And I looked at a, at a scripture, and I want you to look at it to start this, on page 919. And when, we, when I ask you to, this one, particularly in this, what we're going to do today, I'd like you to look at these scriptures, and just so that you can see with your own mind, in Romans chapter 1, on page 919, and in verse 20, the Apostle Paul says, verse 20, Romans chapter 1, page 919, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are cleanly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And, and it, of course, as you understand, religion wouldn't even comment. You'll never hear a, a Christian preacher commenting about crop circles because that's not, it's not, they don't say anything about it in the Bible. And so, you know, it's not allowed to be discussed. It, it has to be then something, that they can't even comment about it. But what are these things? They're circles and squares and other signs, and they are showing up in wheat and corn fields. But they're an amazing thing. They're, they're the subject of television shows, as he said a moment ago. And, and a couple of guys in England said, we did it. And they had a, a board, and, and, and they were going around and showing how they could make crop circles. And some of the experts said, well, these guys really could have been involved in about 120 of them. But there is recorded right now 2,500. So where did the other 2,300 come from? So let's not consider right at this moment as we start the origin of these things from a physical standpoint, at least, at least not yet. Let's instead look at the signs and consider the hidden meanings. Circles, squares, signs, wheat, and corn. Now, what I, if, how many of you have seen these things on television? Okay, good. So that it's very easy to discuss, you know, and, and I think you'll be able to see. First of all, we look at this word circle. The word circle is used once in the Bible. It's on Isaiah chapter 40, verse 22, and it says, It is he that sits upon the circle of the earth. The circle becomes a very important part of all of this. Okay. But there is an interesting statement that we should place on hold. Just kind of look at it and think about it a little bit in our study of crop circles because you've seen them. And you've seen the wheat pushed down. And then the other wheat standing straight. And the wheat that's pushed down makes an image of some kind, either a, either a sign, a, a circle, a square, whatever it makes. It, it makes it perfectly, geometrically perfect, and yet this wheat is bowing down. And, and looking through all of this, I came up with a, with a scripture I thought was very interesting on page 32 in Genesis chapter 37. And it says in Genesis chapter 37, Verse 7, and this gave me a little bit of a chill when I read this, you know, because I'm looking at television and I'm seeing this wheat laying down, forming a perfect sign of some kind. 
And in Genesis chapter 37, verse 7, it says, For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and my sheep arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obsolescence to my sheaves. In other words, your wheat bowed to mine. Your wheat bowed. The wheat bowed down, is what it says. And when you look at these things on television, it's exactly what you see. The wheat bows down. Could we be seeing the wheat bow in respect to the symbols? Could we see the wheat bowing down in respect to the symbols of the eye and the symbols of the circles and the symbols of the strange signs? Because nobody has any idea what these signs mean. And yet before you leave here and walk out of this door, I'm going to provide you with a sheet of paper which has hundreds and hundreds of mystical signs on it the ancients knew about. And you'll find some of them in the wheat fields in the cornfields. See, these things aren't part of religion because religion actually is very little part of God. These things are part of, of, of nature. They're part of that which is true. They're part of that which the ancients knew. The ancient symbols, the ancient circles, the ancient signs. And there are things that you'll see in the wheat field. And actually, if you begin to look at this carefully, you may begin to see a message carved in the wheat field, carved in the cornfield by an intelligence. There's another, there's another interesting scripture. Look at page 737. Page 737, it's, it's a not too often looked at book called Hosea, H-O-S-E-A. And there, uh, in that page 737, in Hosea chapter 2, okay, Hosea chapter 2, and verse 9, and it says, Therefore will I return and take away my corn. And the earth, now I want you to jump down to verse 22, and the earth shall hear the corn and the wine and the oil, and they shall hear Jezreel, which means God scatters. In other words, the earth shall hear the corn. The earth shall hear. The earth shall hear a message. Something shall come. In other words, if spirit would touch wheat and corn, that they would bow and fall, it would seem appropriate that it would serve as signs and something that you and I should think about. I mean, could, you know, could this possibly be, this intelligence that you've been thinking about all of your life, touching in this strange way signs, symbols, communication in the fields of wheat and the fields of corn? Could it possibly be? Well, we can look at the possibility of a message using signs to connect with ancient words. And let's, let's do that right now. Let's go to page 743. And in the book of Joel, J-O-E-L, okay, 743. And it says in Joel chapter 1, verse 10, the field is wasted, the land mourns. For the corn is wasted, the new wine is dried up, and the oil languishes. And it says in verse 7, Be ashamed, husbandmen and vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. And let us not forget that the wheat and corn in these crop circles is perished, beaten down. For the wheat and the barley is perished. But why? Why would this happen? In other words, there has to be a purpose in all of this, wouldn't you think? I mean, if, if, for, if for instance, there is actually something going on in these wheat fields, there's something going on in these cornfields, and it has some connection with what you call God, what you call the Spirit, which, which is this magnificence of, of nature itself. If something is communicating to you, there has to be a reason. And if you look at this Joel chapter, and look at verse 2, 12, Joel chapter 1, verse 12, the very last sentence, it says, it's languishes the palm, the palm tree, all the trees of the field are withered because joy is withered away from the sons of men. There's the reason. That's the reason that these things are showing up in the wheat field and the corn field because there is a message given to you and me because joy is withered away from the sons of men. So these scriptures raise a possibility 
that which grows out of the earth is us. And we must humble ourselves. How? As the wheat, we must bow in silent meditation. And as Joel said in this scripture a little while ago, the earth will hear, the corn will indicate a way of communicating a message. The reason, because joy is withered away from mankind. This is a magnificent planet. It is the jewel of the universe. It sits in the middle. If there ever was a heaven that was created by the gods, this is it. And what have we done on it for all the time that I have been alive and for everything that I've ever read? All we have done is bomb it and rape it and pillage it, brutalize its animals, brutalize its children, degrade its women, because joy is withered away. And so now... <laughs> You turn on your television, and nobody even comments on it. And where are your priests and popes and ministers, and, and where are their comments about these magnificent things in the wheat field? They don't even make a comment. They wouldn't know what to say. Why? Because this is real. It's difficult for religious people to talk about what's real, because what's real frightens them. God speaking in the wheat. God speaking in the wheat. Osiris. Osiris died for the world. His body was cut up into several parts, and his resurrection into the earth was in the form of wheat. Barley. Osiris resurrected in the wheat. God returned to the earth in the wheat. And the wheat is speaking to you now. And they took the wheat, and they made the bread, and they took the barley, and they made beer. And they celebrated the bread and beer as the body and blood of Osiris. And when the cult moved from Egypt to Greece, the god was Dionysius, who is the god of wine, and the celebration was of bread and wine. And that's where it came from. That's where it came from. And so what do we do? We receive the bread and wine. And you've done it all. You've gone to church, and they give you a piece of bread, and you get a drink a little grape juice, and you've taken the body and blood of Christ, so you said. Nobody ever bothered to look at what he said. You can't do that, you know. You can't eat God through your mouth. You can't drink him through your mouth. But yet, that's what it said we do. But what did he say? What did the Christ say about the bread? And what did he say about the wine? Go to page 792. And in the book of Matthew, in Matthew chapter 15, look at verse 17. And here's what Yahshua says. Don't you understand that whatever enters in at the mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the draught? You may take communion and God may enter you very holy, but he leaves you in a completely different condition. We must understand. Just as the disciples didn't understand, they didn't understand. Look at page, look at page 793. And Jesus was speaking of leaven. And in Matthew chapter 16, verse 11, Jesus said, How come you don't understand that I'm not speaking to you about bread, that you should beware of the leaven? I'm not talking to you about these things. And then it says in verse 12 that then they understood that he was talking about the doctrine. And in John 6, 35, it says, I am the bread. He that comes to me shall never hunger. So taking bread is wisdom. What comes into the bread, what comes into the wheat is wisdom. It's understanding. And that's why these signs are, signs are coming into the wheat. It is wisdom. But who, who, has, who, has ever, who has even suggested that these things mean anything to you? Who has even suggested that these signs have anything to say to you? Who has, even, who has even sat with you? Have you read it in the paper? What priest or minister or pope or rabbi has even made a comment about that has made any suggestion to you? Yes. Just last night, 1.30, 
I was up uh, after my meditation. Why don't you stand up so they can see? No, you have to anyhow, so get up. <laughs> I watched TV at 1.30 last night, and I talked about the just the circles. And they had three professors, on, one from Harvard, one from England, and one Italian man. And they suggested uh, through great mathematics, uh, they figured out the sounds. If there's such a thing, as a uh, spirit or uh, somebody trying to get in touch with us on uh, this planet and they figured out the sounds the sounds they were 14 all, to all together they sent chills down my back when they played them first separately and then all together i don't know what the name of the program is but mm -hmm. i can look it up but okay so they do good so there is a suggestion, but and, and in this particular case too, then I would suggest that we, after this, will begin to look at this thing that you'll take to look at these symbols, look at these signs. Say. So and if, the, if these crop circles are signs, they are of the divine bread, and we should eat, or we should listen, or we should allow the message of them to enter into us. This is what I'm saying to you. The bread is the truth. In the bread of the wheat, we see the circles. In other words, wisdom, truth, is wheat, bread. And in the wisdom, in the truth, we see the circles. We see the signs. We should listen. We should pay attention. It says in Proverbs 8, 7, When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass, which is a circle upon the face of the depth. Think of the crop circles. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to think of the circles. I want you to think of the squares. I want you to think of the strange signs. I want you to think of the, the single eye and all of those things that have been seen and the magnificent geometrics of these signs that are cut into the wheat, that are cut into the cornfields. And I want you to listen to this from Brahma. This is written in a book by R.J. Campbell. It's called The Timeless Infinity. Listen to it very carefully, what I'm saying. The emergence of a Brahma means, listen, listen. The emergence of a Brahma means, which is God, means the drawing of lines where there were no lines before. The bringing into existence of relations, sequences, phenomena, space and time. It is as though a being rose out of the shoreless sea, taking a pair of compasses, circles, swept a circle around himself. That circle is the universe. And this is what's showing up in these things. But I love the, sign, the line in which he says, the drawing of lines where there was no line before. Let me read you the Sufi doctrines of the Muslims. The circle of existence, divine light, descends to the intelligences, the souls, the spheres, the elements, till it reaches the earth, the lowest point. The upward journey is then begun through the mineral, through the vegetable, humanity, until perfection is reached. A stamp in the wheat, a force of magnetism down and then back upward to the circle, just as you would stamp a paper, just as you would stamp one of the backs of your checks and say, for deposit only, a stamp has been made in the wheat, a stamp has been made in the corn, and the stamps reveal a message to us. You are receiving stamped in the wheat, stamped in the corn, in magnificent patterns, these things which are signs and symbols which tell a message, which give a message to the world, which give a message to you and me. And for the most part, we have turned ourselves away. In some of the crop circles, there are squares. A circle and a square is a direct evidence of God, because the square is the fourfold nature of man, the circle is the everlasting infinity of God. And the circles and the squares relate to that which is God and man together. The circle is the higher nature. The square is the lower fourfold nature. The four compass points. The immovable square, which is the earth, contained within the never-ending universe, which is the circle. And all of these things are showing up. What I want to do now, and I, I want you not to, you know, there's, some of these things are, uh, different than others. There's two different sheets and I didn't have time to make up. I'm going to provide you with some symbolic, some signs which are mystical symbols. Just a minute. Just, no, just, yeah, I'll, I'll give them just right here. That's a boy. I'm going to provide these to you. And what I want you to do, I don't want you to spend a whole lot of time. We're not going to go into what these mean because if we do, you're gone. You're out of here. Uh, there's no way. I mean, it, it is deep and we could go on forever trying to define what these things mean. What I would say to do, hold it with you. And if you see something on television and it looks like one of these, then we'll talk about it. We'll look up and see what it means because there's, there's literally thousands and thousands of various symbols and signs. Okay? Uh, and as I said, some are... Uh, 
in, on one sheet, some are on another sheet. Why don't you do this side, Travis? And would you help off this side? Don't you? Looks like Greek mythology to me. Well, you know. You well, know. Some of these actually are from Greek. If you, if you, if you ever looked at the Egyptian. Okay. All right, well, we gotta, we got to go on now. So fast as you can there, Travis. <laughs> All right, Lorraine, you better hurry up, catch up. <laughs> okay, now, what's interesting about these things is that as, as you look at, at some of these crop circle situations, you'll see these things showing up. And what I'm trying to simply convey to you, what I wanted to show you, I don't know how many of you got this, this one. But there's a very interesting one. Uh, how many of you got this page? Has anybody got this page? No. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I can see it then if some of you have got this page. This page here, the reason it's very interesting to me, do you see this one here? This is of the Trinity. That was Father, Son, and Spirit, this one here. One of the primary crop circle patterns in this last one that happened, uh, Eve, where's uh, Salisbury? In, do you know? It's in England. Salisbury? Salisbury. Oh, I don't know that is. Well, I know, but Eve is in England, so. Is that near London? Well, okay. But anyhow, well, huh? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's where these things showed up the last time. I think it was December, November. But what's, what's interesting here, to me is that this was, this was one of the, the symbols that was shown in the, the wheat field. Uh, I think it was in November. Okay, it was just like that. And if you look at this one here, it's exactly a duplicate of this, which is the Trinity. Bill, yes? I think you see the Stonehenge area. Stonehenge is in Salisbury Plain. Okay, well, then that probably. Uh, that would be interesting. And the reason that's interesting too, Eve, is because if you see at the top of the page, right up, now that's really interesting, right, and I didn't know that. You and I did not uh, make anything up. But right above the, the Trinity sign is the Stonehenge sign. Do you see that? Yeah. Which is interesting. And I didn't put that there. Maybe this was uh, cosmically arranged. You know, this is terrific because wouldn't it be, you know, if, if there is such a thing as a God and he's sending and he's stamping messages in the week and I, you know, you know, and nobody pays a bit. It wouldn't be interesting to say, hey, hey, they're, they're, they're starting to think about this, you know, maybe somebody's starting to talk about this. But uh, this, one, this one to me was really interesting, this Trinity type of thing, because this is exactly the pattern, one of the patterns that was seen in, in the last uh, crop circles in Salisbury, England, okay. The Kabbalah, which is the ancient Kabbalah, you talked about the Kabbalah sometimes, is the scheme of the four worlds is portrayed in circles. And basically what happens in the Kabbalah is the world starts at the center in a dot and then moves itself outward like this, you know, and, and goes on and on and on and on in, in infinity. It's the first establishment of individualized existence. So the circle is very important. Concentric rings, concentric circles, the center makes the whole circle of the worlds which develop out of the center. And that's part of Kabbalah. That's part of the crop circles as well. See, and so what, what you're seeing on those sheets of paper that I gave you, and I, and I want you to turn them over now because now you're going to read circles and you're not going to pay any attention and this whole thing is going to be a waste. <laughs> <coughs> That's a girl. We'll tell them, well, you can look at those later, okay? What I'm saying to you, they're very strange things, and you're going to see more of these patterns in the earth, and there's just something that you want to look at. There was an ancient labyrinth. I don't know what you know what a labyrinth is, a kind of a thing where you'd go in and there would be a, a block here, and then you'd go someplace else, and so forth and so on. And the ancient labyrinth, which some of these circles look like, showed the need for each to search and stumble and change patterns again. So when you see a labyrinth in these, in these circles, you're seeing what is being conveyed as, as a message that you, you, can't, just, you can't just find a, a true path. You've got to search for this path, and you've, and you've got to make the mistakes. You've got to find the wrong way so that you don't go that way a second time, and you can find your way to a, to a clear understanding of what this thing of God is. There's a very interesting, in the ancient symbols too, the triangle pointing upward, which you'll see in some of these uh, crop circles, is fire. Okay? 
the triangle pointing downward is water. Okay? And so then you'll see, uh, and, and if you were to take the, the religious Christian thing that we, we teach and so forth, you'd have John, Yahshua, Jesus. And then in the center is that period of called air, which is nothing. But these are, symbol, these are ancient symbols that predate any religion. It has nothing to do, when I, when I wear this thing, people say, oh, that's a Jewish star. It has nothing to do with being a Jewish star. It is talking about fire and it is talking about water. These are the earth symbols. And all of this is going to happen to the earth because w with this age, you're going to take that which we've known as religion and take it back to nature. Nature is your religion. Nature is God. God is in all things. Whether it be dolphins or palm trees or mountains or whatever it is, this is God. Whether it be the universe and the stars and the constellations and the clouds or whatever, it's God. But we've reduced God down to a man. We've reduced down to... We, you see him on television. Oh, Father, thank you, Father. They've reduced this down to a man who gives you good things if you do what he says and bashes you in the brains if you don't do what he says. It has nothing to do with that. This is nature. This is universal intelligence. This is universal beauty. This is beyond your ability to understand. You say, well, I can't figure this out. I can't understand that. Remember what we were talking about last week? You know what you got in here? Inside of this thing? Email. Well, you got that, but you got you, this television set. But the problem is too many of us can't get it beyond channel 13. And all of this stuff is going on channel 7,000. And your television doesn't go above 13. You got to hook it to the cable. You got to hook it to the cable. You got you to you be able to get to a frequency above channel 13 because that's all you know. And so this doesn't make any sense to you. Crop circles. If I go up there and cross the street to the church across the street and tell them about crop circles, what's going to happen? They're going to say, crop circle, get out of here. <laughs> Not, call the police, the guys are maniac. Because they don't know. And why? Because they can't see anything above 13. Their television doesn't go above there. So they got to hook into the cosmic cable company. And there are no outages on the cosmic cable. Goes. That's all that. Hey, if, you're, if your television only goes from 2 to 13, and I say to you, let's turn on CNN and watch Larry King, you say, oh, I don't know anything about that. I can't get that. It's not, there is no such thing. It only goes to 13. What happens when you turn it past 13? It goes back to 2, and we start all over again. The same thing. Isn't that what your life is? The same thing. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then what happens the next day? We go back to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we're turning and turning and turning. And I don't see nothing. But suddenly, you hook into the cosmic cable, and you turn, and there's 14, 15, 16, 17, and 20, and 30, 40, and on you go, and Larry King, and Disney, and everybody's <laughs> flying around. I didn't know they were there, because you weren't plugged in. And most of the world is not plugged in. And when you talk to them about this, remember, this stuff is ch transmitted on channel 7,000, and their TVs don't go above 13, so how the heck do you expect they're going to understand? When you talk to them about this, they say, I, 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 you're crazy. And you, you say to them, you've got to hook up to the cable. Look at them like that, real strange. Huh? <laughs> say, your television isn't going high. They say, I, I, I touch the most high God. And you say, I touch the most high frequency. Because that's what the most high God is. When they talk about a high God, they're talking about a high frequency. The frequency that the human brain on the left side can't touch. But when you start to understand the people who I, well, I shouldn't tell you, but the people who are making the crop circles, their frequencies are much higher. And all you, you know, don't, Lynn was telling me about a lady who opened her eyes in bed, saw a woman standing next to her bed with a pocketbook. She's as clear as can be. She went over to touch, and as she did, the woman disappeared. And I got a letter from a girl in Washington State. She told me she woke up and sounded like somebody was putting a cup on the dresser. When she got up, it was, it was so real. So I meditated and I talked to some of these people that I talked to. Shall it rain? 
You know what they said? Listen. You listen? When you're sleeping, the pineal gland opens. And in this cosmic age, you begin to see on another frequency. When you wake, you then go and see, but as you're walking to see what you think is there, the pineal starts to close. It's there, but it's on a different frequency. So what can you see in the circles of the wheat? What can you see in your heart? What can you see in life when you move to this higher frequency? And the pineal will stay open, and then you'll see the lady with the pocketbook. You'll see the person with the cup. You'll see all of those who are there. But remember right now, as soon as you expose to light, that pineal shuts down. You've got to exercise it. You've got to keep it open. See, the crop circles, the signs show the nature of an element signified by a particular peculiar symbol. Now, if you see this, and you will in the crop circles, okay? That is a symbol of gold, and that is a symbol of the sun. That is a symbol of God. That is a symbol of the universe. And I'm going to show you one that I can tell you about the earth and something that was told to you in those circles and symbols in Salisbury, Maryland in November of this year. I'm going to show you the symbol right now. And very few people know what it was. Here it is. That was the symbol that was made in the wheat and was a perfect geometric single symbol. And there were light beings who were talking to us. And I don't know what the other symbols were. I didn't see them. But do you know what that means? Poison. That was carved in the wheat in Salisbury. And it's a mystical ancient symbol that means poison. Hence, without even going any further, have the beings the right to tell us you are poisoning the earth? Have the beings the right to tell us you have poisoned the earth? Indeed. And that's what they told us. So here we have cryptograms, circles and signs which are part of the spiritual expression of nature since the beginning of time. And they're being seen in the fields of the wheat and the corn as Osiris came out of the wheat and the corn. G. Gaskill and his definition of the word wheat would lead us to understand why the signs appear in wheat fields. A symbol of the spiritual nature shown, sown in the lower nature, which is the earth. It is a seed sown into the earth. And then he says, reaped in the higher aspects of the higher divine mind. It thus becomes the food of the gods. The divine germ, which is the wheat, operating in the lower, which we see through these crop circles, causes their transmutation into higher emotions and meanings. In other words, out of this wheat, okay, comes these designs, these circles, and they transmute themselves from circles in the wheat to truthful words to our understanding as to what we must do and what is being said to us for the salvation of all of this. If there is a supreme divine element coming down to touch the wheat, then listen to the prayer from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. It says, O white grain wheat and red grain barley of the land of God, I have come unto you. I have striven and I have borne my burden Following the company of the gods, the mooring post is fixed for me in the pool of the wheat. Ah. See. I believe the symbols and I believe the circles. In fact, I know the symbols and the circles represent God and man and the wheat that is fallen makes the signs to represent the harvest of those who have grown in the germs of the inner spirit. 
I believe we are being told that this is the time of the divine harvest. I want you to read with me. I want you to read with me. I want you to turn to page 669. And I want you to go to Jeremiah. I want you to go to Jeremiah chapter 51. In verse 33. For thus said the Lord, the host, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon, is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. Yet a little while in the time of her harvest shall come. The wheat is being threshed. And you're seeing it. But be wise and open to look. Matthew 9, 38, Jesus said, Pray to the Lord of the harvest and he will send laborers into his harvest. And look at page 790, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And in Matthew chapter 13, verse 39, they talk about the weeds and the wheat. And it says in verse 39, the enemy that sowed them, meaning the weeds, those are the thoughts as the devil, which is the lower mind. But the harvest is the end of the world, and that's the end of the age. That's the end of Pisces. But look what it says. The reapers are the angels, the light beings. And you know what they are? Vibrations of electromagnetic waves. And don't you see that electric, my, the electromagnetic waves intelligently coming through those things are stamping down the wheat in these magnificent symbols and circles and squares and, and sending us a message of light. And all we have to do is begin to understand these metaphysical meanings to be able to read this code. They're coming in light. Have you seen them? What are you saying? Have you seen them? Talking to you, yes, you've seen them. And then yet, <laughs> they stand out here. They haven't the slightest idea what we're talking about. And even in sometimes in here, you've seen them. And now this morning, we've talked about it. And I've told you, whether, I'll tell you in plain, flat out language, these things are being caused by light beings from a higher dimension in this planet. These things are being sent into the wheat because the wheat is that which is of the harvest of God. These things are being sent in to fulfill the prophecies of Revelation and the ancient mystic books of the Hindus and the Buddhists. And don't think that this is something that should be put off. Don't think this is something that you shouldn't pay attention to. Go to page 864. Look with me. And I want you to look with me. Maybe even read with me. Maybe you can read it with me if you want to read it under your breath or whatever. Go to John chapter 4. And I want you to think of the crop circles. And I want you to think what we're talking about today because now you're going to see more and more of them and it says in John chapter 4 verse 35 don't say there are yet four months and that means the fourfold nature of man don't think that you've got it under control and then comes the harvest I say to you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are like the harvest what fields look on the wheat fields look on the corn fields look at the circles and the signs and the eyes and all of these things which are being stamped by the electromagnetic field by the electromagnetic energy of these cosmic light beings look on the fields for they are white to harvest look where not in the bible it didn't say to look in the bible it didn't say to look in church it didn't say to look in your prayer book it didn't say to look in your stained glass windows it didn't say it says look on the fields and where are the signs that have astounded the universe in the fields of the wheat and in the fields of the corn? You have seen the circles. You have seen the signs. And you've seen them cut into the wheat. The wheat has been cut. The wheat has been beaten down. And you know this is the new age of Aquarius. It is now time for you sitting in this room and for you that are watching me to understand what is going on. Are you ready to find out as we conclude this thing what is going on? Go to page 1010. Page 1010. Revelation 14. Okay? Revelation 14. <laughs> and you know what you got now? You got a new breed of politicians that are so out of step with the universe that the only way they can figure out how to solve the problems of the economy is to beat up on the poor. Let's slam down on the 
kids having babies. Let's slam down on all the people that can't help themselves. Oh, that we're not going to turn around and say to the companies, maybe you should make a little less profit. Maybe instead of making two billion in a day, you can only make 1.9 billion a day. Maybe you should raise your damn uh, minimum wage from five to ten dollars an hour because that's what it should be. But they can't do that. See. But what's coming and what's being stamped into the earth is a sign that says nobody shall be oppressed. All shall be lifted up because none falls short. There are no chosen. Everyone is to be lifted up. And so how does the message come? Cut into the wheat, and these people don't see. See people in Washington see today? They're talking about it. They don't see it. Because they don't have eyes to look. And it says in Revelation chapter 14, and I've asked you to look, and I've asked you to say, okay, let's, what's going on? And another angel came out, verse 15, and another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. Can you see the angel looking up to one that sits on the cloud? And he says, thrust in your sickle and reap. For the time has come. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. Said to the angel, take your sickle and cut. And the angel is cutting into the wheat. And he's cutting in designs to send you great messages. You that have eyes to see. You that have ears to hear. And it says in Revelation 14, 19, And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great wine press. And it says in verse 20, Now listen to me. Where you are getting very close, in spite of all of the chaos that you see on the earth, which is prophesied, where you are very, getting very close is when the sun reaches the neck of Pegasus. When the sun reaches the neck of Pegasus, Aquarius will explode. And the sickle into the wheat, the sickle into the corn. And in verse 14, 19, it says, and the great wine press of the I want you to read verse 20. And the wine press was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the wine press even unto the horse's bridle. It's the time of the movement to the neck of Pegasus. In the space of a thousand six hundred furlongs. Huh, that great? One thousand six hundred furlongs. A furlong is two hundred and twenty yards, give or take a couple. In two hundred and twenty yards, there are six hundred and sixty feet. Do you know that if it was two hundred and twenty two yards, which it could be, the number would be six six six. And in all of that, there are 7,920 inches, 1,600 furlongs times 7,920 equals 126720. 1, 3, 9, 15. What? 3, 9, 16, 18. One plus eight. Was oh, that a coincidence? Is your television set going above 13? Because if it is, you know what I'm talking about. If it doesn't, say, I'm never going back there. The guy's on a this whole raving lunatic. <coughs> really got you, huh? Got you choked up tonight, Carol. Yes, you did. <laughs> Well, you take those little things you got, and you dial your television set, and you just look at this stuff. Don't be the ones who say, gee, that was an interesting program. I don't know what it was. You know. <laughs> Record it and study it. And look at these things. And look at those little symbols on there. And then see what is being said. Or you can play the religious game that you've played all of your life and you can sing some song written by some bozo back in the 1700s and tell how well wretch you are, how guilty you are, and you're a fakakta and all of this stuff and you're going to hell and then that's the end of that and you drop dead and they put you in a box and stuff paper in your mouth and everybody goes, geez, what a wonderful looking this guy looks better than he ever did and this is the end of it and you know nothing or else you can know everything and you can be part of it and you can flow in the harmony of what's going on and you can touch these light beams and they can touch you and you can wake up, and when you see one standing next to you, when you reach out to say, hey, what, you know, the thing won't shut down so fast, leave it open. Exercise it. 
See, exercise so it stays open. Meditate, meditate, meditate. Meditate. Tonight we're doing meditation. Kabbalah, M M Mandela, Katara. Meditate, meditate. Do it. But do it. If, if on the other hand, this sounds weird, think of what you have experienced in life. Oh boy. That's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> there are people in Russia today and they are lobbing shells and just obliterating. We're going to take the town. It's like when we're in Vietnam, we're going to take the town. But when you, there ain't going to be any town left when you take it. We're just going to, for what? Nobody knows. But this is for everything. They are here. They have arrived. I know them. You should know them. They'll communicate with you. They talk with you. They'll take you into their confidence. And there is a revolution of love going to happen to this earth. Because in the Aquarian age, it can come no other way. And all of this is prophesied in 24 Matthew, as Jesus said, when you see the man with the pitcher of water and all of these things, and he talked about all of these sorrows. And it's been going on for hundreds of years that these people are just shooting and killing each other and running around like crazy because they can't understand. But you can't because you do know. Now you've got to understand that what I've shown you is only available to you if you're willing to move into this frequency above that which is the normal human mind. Otherwise, you're going to be stuck from channel 2 to 13 for the rest of your life, and you'll never see, you'll never know. You'll turn a page, you'll see a, you'll turn a channel, you'll see crop circles, and you'll go on to see what's on, you know, sports channel, because you'll miss it. But you who see it should begin to read it. Read it! Read the wine, read the wheat, read the barley and watch as the sun rises to the horse's neck. And when it says the blood flows from the horse's bridle, don't read it literally as they do. It means the spirit pours out all over the entire universe and soaks it with that which is the resurrection of God. Dolphins, whales, mountains, beautiful stars, exploding things of the universe, finally setting the minds of people in the direction that they were intended to go in the beginning. In the wheat circles, in the crop circles, Look onto the fields, for they are white to harvest. Thank you very much for sharing this time. <laughs>